It made me cry. This one's wife. They've blown it. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. I now turn to The Wrap, an article written by Emily Smith, which provides us with a thoughtful and forensic examination of just how the Sussexes have blown it, how they've messed up, how they've fucked it up, in relation to the delivery of content and the deals that they had in that regard vis-a-vis Spotify and Netflix. It's an interesting observation with credible evidence that does demonstrate that they've truly blown it in that regard and there's no way back for them. And this poses a huge problem for them financially. Entitled, This One's Wife and Harry's $100 million Netflix Deal is a Hollywood Miss. The Sussexes have delivered little since signing with the Steamer in 2020. Bit of proofreading needed, should read Streamer. Although, maybe it's right, because it's a steaming load of shit that they have created. When Prince Harry and this one's wife's lucrative Spotify deal fell apart in 2023, Bill Simmons, the Ringer's founder and managing director, was incensed. I wish I had been involved in the This One's Wife and Harry Leave Spotify negotiation, Simmons, the head of podcast innovation and monetization at Spotify, which owns the Ringer, said on his self-entitled show, The fucking grifters. That's the podcast we should have launched with them. Simmons's astonishing comments followed the collapse of the Monty Shit Show California-based Duke and Duchess of Sussex's $20 million deal with Spotify, signed in December of 2020. They delivered just 12 episodes of This One's Wife's Archetypes podcast. But the Spotify contract paled in comparison to the estimated $100 million Netflix agreed in September 2020 to pay them, a deal which produced the documentary series Harry and This One's Wife two years later, and little else since then. Aside from the docu-series, the exclusive Netflix deal produced the Heart of Invictus in August 2023, which covered Prince Harry's Games for Wounded Warriors, and Live to Lead, about inspiring world leaders and featured interviews with Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Gloria Steinem. That series premiered on December 31st, 2022. Unproduced is an animated series created by this one's wife titled Pearl, which Netflix axed in May 2022 as part of a series of cutbacks. There is little else close to production. What has gone wrong? The Rap spoke to multiple insiders who say the Sussexes have worn out their welcome in Hollywood with an iron-fisted desire for control combined with a lack of experience. Pausing there, that sums up neatly this one's wife. An iron-fisted desire for control, which of course is driven by the pursuit of the prime aims vis-à-vis her narcissism. She must have control. She perceives certain behaviours, which in anybody else's world aren't problematic, as problematic to her need for control. Furthermore, she has no experience in this field, but again her narcissism tells her that she knows best. Thus, she needs to be able to do everything, decide on everything, tell everybody what to do, but she hasn't got the ability, the credentials, or the experience to do so. Oh dear. The article continues by explaining a revolving door of executives have departed the couple's production company Archwell in the past two years while a long list of exhausted agents, producers, and other industry veterans have stamped it with a life's too short reputation. Thus, her behaviour has tainted them, and basically others look at it and think, not going to go near them. The Sussexes founded Archwell Productions in the name of their four-year-old son Archie. It includes their non-profit charitable foundation plus a for-profit arm focused on media projects. Everything with them was fraught and complicated because they wanted complete control, one Hollywood creative who has worked with them who declined to be identified. Another insider with knowledge of the management of Archwell agreed, saying the couple have proven to be stubborn to the point of alienating others. It appears that they just want what they want and won't take advice, the insider said. 
Taking on Harry and this one's wife was a great coup for Netflix, public relations and image guru Mark Bukowski told The Wrap. It probably got a lot of eyeballs and subscriptions, but they, Harry and this one's wife, never delivered. Again, typical behaviour of the narcissist, if she can get what she requires by talking about it, why deliver it? An insider with knowledge of the Netflix deal with Archwell said it is an overhead agreement, meaning not all the money would go to the Sussexes, but it also helps fund their staff, office and development fees. Archwell and the Sussexes declined to comment for this story. The former royal couple were initially a hot property before signing with Netflix. They also had discussions with Apple, Disney and NBC Universal. The New York Times first reported. This one's wife previously narrated a documentary about elephants for Disney+, and Harry collaborated with Oprah Winfrey on a docuseries about mental health for Apple TV+. The Harry and This One's Wife docuseries, directed by Liz Garbus, was a legitimate hit. The series was an intimate glimpse inside the Sussexes' marriage and made headlines for their criticism of the British royal family for failing to support them, smearing and victimhood, including allegations of racism, playing the race card, and a narrative that the couple was essentially forced to leave England for the United States, playing the victim. But production was apparently difficult. One individual with knowledge of the series said dealing with the former couple was a nightmare, as they were fiercely protective of their story. Harry and this one's wife made the collaborative process very hard, to the point there was no collaboration at all, the insider said. Other projects have not gotten off the ground. Netflix and this one's wife announced Pearl with much fanfare in 2021. The animated series, co-executive produced by Markle and David Furnish, was to centre on the adventures of a 12-year-old girl who finds inspiration in a variety of influential women throughout history. Netflix cancelled it the following year. There have been reports Netflix bought the romantic Carly Fortune book, Meet Me at the Lake, for $1 million for the pair to produce into a movie. Other plans include a TV drama feminist retelling of Miss Havisham from Charles Dickens' Great Expectations and a documentary about Prince Halley travelling solo in Africa, but these all seem far from getting off the ground. Another Archwell insider told the rap that Meet Me at the Lake was in active development but has not yet been cast, and Harry's trip to Africa has not been scheduled. They have a couple of unscripted things they're working on. Netflix Chief Content Officer Bel A. Bayaria said at the next on Netflix event of February the 1st of This One's Wife and Harry, including a movie in development and a scripted series. Bayaria emphasised that these projects were still in early development, which raises the question... What exactly has been going on between Archwell and Netflix? Covid struck at the start of their deal. This one's wife went on maternity leave, though leave from what? And then the writers and actors strikes halted production for much of last year. But with all that, it is remarkable how little the couple have actually made work for the streamer. Although, of course, as I've noted repeatedly, it's hardly surprising. Reps for Netflix, which has also pulled back on its TV and film expenditure during the work stoppages, declined to comment. Harry and this one's wife do not have guild relationships, so any non-US productions would not have been affected. The actress is still earning residuals from Suits, which recently found an entirely new audience on Netflix. Meanwhile, there has been a dramatic executive turnover at Archwell, particularly those negotiating TV, film and media deals. Mandana Dayani, a human rights activist and business executive, was the president of Archwell from May 2021 to December 2022 and stepped down just days before Harry and This One's Wife docuseries aired, with no reason offered. The company also lost its BAFTA-winning head of content, Ben Browning, in January 2023 after his contract expired. Browning returned to his former employer, Film Nation Entertainment, as president of production. Bennett Levine, their production manager, left in January, as did Rebecca Sananez. This one's wife and Harry's head of audio, who left to work as a freelance writer and podcast producer after the Archetype podcasts were concluded. The company has also parted ways with their SVP of scripted television, Fargo producer Nashika Campbell, who lasted less than two years in the role. All of these losses are demonstrative of two things. First, they're probably not allowed to get on and do their jobs because this one's wife micromanages them. After all, 
she doesn't have much else to do other than pour through social media, mainstream media, to see what's being said and written about her, and then to harangue people who know far more than she does, but in order to make herself look important and completely blinded to her lack of ability, she needs to tell them how it is. And secondly, it may well be the case that Archwell could no longer afford them all. So a high turnover of staff is often indicative of a toxic individual at the helm by virtue of the narcissist who believes they know better than anybody else so that people ultimately get fed up of the interference, the intransigent behaviour of the owner or boss, the issues with getting paid, etc. So they end up leaving. It is no coincidence that so many people have left as a consequence of the involvement of this one's wife. The article continues by explaining that this one's wife and Harry don't have a quality team around them. They drive the ship, they are in the wheelhouse. Whether you are the Obamas or this one's wife and Harry, you have to defer to people who can really get the job done. They just need to sort out a proper production company. They need significant hires, Bukowski said. People who can actually develop scripts, wrangle talent. The Archwell Insider insisted the couple has hired talented new executives. Tracy Ryerson was brought in as the new head of scripted content. She formerly worked at the production company behind Peaky Blinders. Karen Manderback Productions and starred in a reality show titled The Real L World. Former Disney Plus executive Chanel Pisnik joined in 2021 as head of Unscripted. The Sussexes made a surprise appearance at the Jamaica premiere of the Bob Marley biopic One Love in late January, sparking speculation about a possible deal with the film's distributor Paramount Pictures. Yet, pa yet parent company Paramount Global is strongly rumoured to be up for sale, so it is unlikely to be a safe landing pad for the couple. Last August, it was announced that WME signed this one's wife to be repped by Endeavour CEO Ari Emanuel, Brad Slater and Jill Smoller. Archwell is also being repped by the agency, which did not comment to the rap. She is extremely ambitious and knows what she wants, an industry insider told the rap of this one's wife discussions with the talent agency. But there have been issues with executive turnover inside Archwell. In the meantime, the Sussexes need to make money to keep up their California lifestyle and their $14.65 million mansion. The UK's Daily Mail reported that they made around $20 million from their Tell Ale documentary, while Harry made an estimated $15 million from his memoir Spare. I think possibly Netflix has dodged a bullet, Bukowski said. They know their content. They are data wonks. They know where the interest is. So they've got a very good idea or not where there is a huge amount of excitement around this one's wife and Harry. The viewing public may not be interested in a romantic movie from the Sussexes, he said. They create a lot of column inches, but do people want content from them unless it is revealing something extraordinary about themselves or the British royals? I don't know how much more they can reveal. Thus, an interesting article which shows, once again, the various facets of this one's wife's narcissism causing problems and demonstrates how the pair of them have blown it. As a consequence of her need for iron grip control, her sense of entitlement to demand what she wants, her failure to manage people effectively and allow people with far more talent than she has to get on with it, the fact that she believes that she always knows best, the fact that the laziness of the entitled grifter means that very little has been produced results in not only Netflix not needing to pay them anywhere near the amount that the contract or the deal was first described as, but it also demonstrates how very few people have any real interest in taking the Sussexes thereafter. As Bukowski quite properly points out, are you going to look at Harry and this one's wife and think there is a powerhouse of imaginative content creation? You're not. You would only be interested in them perhaps talking about their lives to an extent. That would be more the few fans that they have would be interested in that. And more widely, what they had to say about the British royal family. But that well has now run dry. And accordingly, it leaves them with a real problem. They've nothing to talk about. They've nothing to offer. You can say, oh, we'll produce this. But if you're not going to let the people with the talent actually do it, all you're going to do is create 
bum content. This one's wife won't learn. She truly believes she's brilliant at what she does. And Lemonada are going to find out that she's just going to either create very little, or if she does actually create something, that it's going to be deadly dull. Indeed, it would seem already with the she's too academic to entertain comment that she it's being steered away from having celebrities because probably most celebrities don't want to appear on the show. They recognise that it's the kiss of death for them. All of these failures that are described in this article are linked to her narcissism, her sense of entitlement, her lack of accountability, her grandiosity in always knowing best, her haughty behaviours in the way that she deals with people, her unrivaled ideas that she is successful and brilliant through her magical thinking, the manipulations that she clearly uses, the micromanagement of people, the dismissal of other people's ideas. All of it's linked to her narcissism. And it demonstrates that because there are no deals in the offing, and it looks very likely that the Netflix one will end soon, that in essence, the pair of them have blown it. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.